Denise here um, with that promised video on the New England Institute of Religious Research. This is another video in my um, Freedom is Sacred series in which I started looking at the plight of a small group of Christian street witnesses who had attracted the attention of the anti-cult movement, a group of vigilantes, um, particularly the ones centered in the Rick Ross Institute, which is a, a hate group designed to attack any and all um, new or unusual religious or philosophical groups. And so we started looking at that. There's one particular um, team inside the hate group, the hate site that's run by Rick Ross. And basically he runs stalker rings. And uh, there are different forums, different boards inside his larger forum that specialize in different groups. Some of them are perfectly legitimate. They um, strive to publish good information that you can use to make an informed decision about your own or a loved one's involvement with a controversial group. However, Mr. Ross comes out of the kidnapping tradition, the deprogramming tradition. He has, in fact, been involved in actual kidnappings. Um, in the past, and he continues to use whatever means necessary to coerce and violate the civil rights and civil liberties of adults who choose to follow these different groups. So anyway, we started that way. Um, upon looking at the hate group inside Rick Ross, we followed the path of one of his main associates, a man named Brian Birmingham, who works with the Meadow Haven so-called clinic. It's actually a private prison. They don't have bars in the windows as far as I know, but when you're in there, you are um, under duress. You cannot leave. If you leave, it's at great risk to yourself because local authorities consider that to be some kind of clinic. What they don't know is that Meadow Haven is actually, or they know it, but they choose not to acknowledge the fact that Meadow Haven is really nothing more than a facility run by some theologians from the New England Institute of Religious Research, which actually has its offices there. And it's hard to say, does the New England Institute own the Meadow Haven jail, private jail, or does Meadow Haven own New England Institute? Um, I'm using the word jail loosely. Jail uh, is a place where you, you're put uh, while people decide what to do with you. It's not prison. Prison is for convicted criminals. But uh, what a person gets put into Metal Haven for is having joined a group that does not follow the basically Calvinist fundamentalism, what they call Orthodox Christianity, of the New England Institute, which was founded by Lutherans and uh, a, a non-denominational out of the Gordon Theological Seminary. So <clears throat> following that path around, we come to the website for the New England Institute of Religious Research. And um, they've got themselves a fairly fancy logo. I um, don't know if you can really see it from here. But you can link over to the site and just make up your own mind about what you're looking at. And, you know, it looks pretty classy. Um, on a letterhead, it would impress anybody. Um, <clears throat> the front page has the classic scare tactics. Uh, the story of that massive uh, mass murder in Japan of the Aum Shinrikyo has nothing at all to do with these people in Mount Haven. But it's a scary story. And you read it and go, oh wow, this is something they had to do with. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a vague impression. Underneath that, we have um, a story about a, a 
small church whose policies on faith healing have led to some deaths. And this is tragic when it happens. But um, it can happen just about anywhere where people decide to take uh, medical care um, into non-scientific directions. Um, but that, you know, again, that's, that's a scary story underneath it. Oh, a scary story about a murder down in Texas. A man who was convicted in California of a death, a beating death of a young girl in an athletic cult. Um, he ended up somehow down here in Texas. I'm not going to bother reading the whole story if he finished his sentence and, and was released for, since 1988. Uh, but he was living in Texas and somebody killed him. Okay, there's a big scary story. Underneath that, um, a story about the Christians in Karachi being attacked by Islamists. Oh, that's a good story for them to have there because what the New England Institute of Religious Research is doing to Christians all over the United States is very close to what the Muslims are doing in Islamic countries where they do not want to see anybody believing differently from how they believe. What we are looking at with the New England Institute of Religious Research is a domestic terrorist group. They're Christian terrorists. They're like the Taliban. The Taliban destroyed moderate and uh, very wide-ranging Islamic culture was destroyed by the rise of the Taliban. And what we are seeing in the United States is a very wide-ranging and varied Christian culture that varies everywhere from the, the um, left-wing Peace March people all the way through the, the Amish and the Mennonites and uh, the Catholic uh, cathedrals. It's all being attacked by this Taliban group called the New England Institute for Religious Research. Let's look a little bit at it. About N-E-I-R-R. <clears throat> it was founded in 1991 as a mission outreach to provide churches, secular organizations, and concerned individuals with up-to-date research on cultic structures. In other words, they're going to tell you who's a cult and who isn't. The Institute also provides training for people who work with those caught up by such destructive groups. Now, who works with somebody who's in a different group? Because if, you're, if you join a group and you become a member and maybe it's even a completely uh, closed group where you decide to live and work and devote your entire life to being among your fellow believers, who works with you who's not in that group? Obviously, it's somebody you have not chosen to have in your life. Every American has the right to choose to join a community of fellow believers, whether they are uh, Christians, Muslims, um, New Age. It doesn't matter. We are a free country. We don't have the right to work with adults who go into communities who didn't ask for our help. That's called stalking because you have to find these people. How do you find out somebody went into a group that's on your list of groups to attack? Obviously, somebody tells you. Somebody who doesn't like that person tells you, please go help my sister-in-law, or my brother, or my husband, or my uh, niece, or my neighbor, or my neighbor's daughter. I think she's in a cult. And you look, oh, it's on our list. Then you start following her around. 
the kid gets paranoid. She gets told by people she's paranoid. She gets labeled. She might not even be an actual member of the cult. It might just be a rumor. It might just be a rumor. I'll tell you the truth. I, I got caught up in some of this um, interest, partly out of a genuine concern, uh, because I have experience in a genuinely destructive cults where you are truly um, prevented from leaving. But I also was the victim of an extremely vicious member of my family who started rumors and, sub and subjected my daughter and I to such horrendous misery over the years. She hooked up with these people at one point, and I, I can go into that in another, inter another uh, video. But basically, I'm not concerned about what happened to me. My daughter's dead now. She finally committed suicide because of what these people did to my family. They've been around since 1991. And I'm going to go into their complete history because they've destroyed a lot of French Catholics in Massachusetts. Not just French Catholics, but they, they one of their groups specialized in it. Go to their website, and another thing you're going to see... Oh, I'm going to have to redo this. Um, <clears throat> okay. Let's see. They have a forum. And it's very interesting. The man who's in charge of the discussion forum for the New England Institute of Religious Research, which is a domestic terrorist, Taliban-style Christian terrorist group, the New England Institute of Religious Research engages in personal terrorism. The personal terrorism of, hello for chirps, <laughs> the personal terrorism of stalking individuals, individual college students, uh, young mother, young husband, older folks, anyone who happens to go to a Bible study or a prayer meeting or some non-Christian thing, some New Age um, meeting of some kind starts hanging around in a bookstore and somebody in the family or neighborhood gets upset and calls the NEIRR and says, I think my loved one's in a cult. I think my neighbor's in a cult and is bringing people I don't like into my neighborhood. That's where the terrorism starts. The people start being stalked. First they're stalked online by researchers. The researchers don't do what I'm doing, which is look up the groups and talk about them. The researchers will find out where do you have lunch? Who do you go with? How much money do you make? Do you own property? What kind of work do you do? Do you teach? Do you have uh, human contact that we can throw a scare into people that you shouldn't be around other people because you belong to a cult. And you might not even belong to the cult. You might just be a casual observer of the cult yourself. Who knows? And I'm using the word cult loosely the way they do. Um, it's Cult is, is a criminalizing word. You refer to, um, you see a man and a woman together. And the woman is very beautiful. And they're obviously in a romance. You can refer to her as his girlfriend, or you can refer to her as a whore. Which one of those words is going to get her arrested or kicked out of her home? It's the same thing with this stuff. You see somebody go to a Bible study meeting, and you can refer to it as a prayer group or a Bible study, or you can refer to it as a cult. Which one is going to cost those people their jobs and their homes and maybe even their children?